This is MJ Munoz. You are listening to Story Over Everything, the chronicles of an author, artist, and analyzer. You can find all my work at mjmunoz.com. This recording was originally started on October 28, 2022, and I'm just going to say that's when it was recorded because that's mostly true. Anyway, uh, I'm going to be live writing a prompt this session, which will be what makes a hunter heroic. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how I do. First, I'm going to get into my work in progress and let you know what I have done as I'm working towards becoming a published author. And uh, the Growbug series is not chugging along. It's creeping along. And I was able to, from last week... Well, last week I had assigned for myself to get done by 1028 uh, sketches for 32 pages or 16 spreads of my Growbug book one. Uh... I was not able to complete that. By 1028, I had done six spreads, which means that for next week, I will have to do ten more spreads. Uh, So, unfortunately, I didn't write that in my notes. I'll have to see if it's in my show notes properly or not. But basically, you know, I'm a week late in in getting... No, I'm two weeks late now in getting all my thumbnails done uh, for me to get to my artist. But uh, I'm making progress slowly but surely, so... Uh, I hope I will do better by this next Friday, which is going to be, what, 11.05 or 11.04? Anyway, we'll see. We will see what happens. I have to put the work in and and make it happen. So my next action would be do uh, sketches, thumbnail sketches for pages, or spread 7 through 16 for Growbug Book 1. In the show notes, there's follow-up research, or there's follow-up stuff and there's back burner stuff that I'm going to omit from the audio record here just so I'm not wasting your time or mine. And I did no writing and no drawing this week other than the sketches, which I'm not counting, other than my Fabula X Machina, which I will also not count from last week. But I did enjoy that one a lot. Um, so, anyway. Uh, this week I analyzed uh, the following shows. Don Brothers 34 and uh, Kamen Rider Geats. So that's... It's a Super Sentai, it's uh, Avatar Sentai, Don Brothers 34, and then Kamen Rider Geats, Episode 8. Um, and I will go ahead and drop in my audio from the uh, full analysis of each of those shows that I did where I share my lessons learned. So I will be quiet for a few moments, let myself drop those in, and then on the other side of that, we are going to talk about uh, the prompt. Well, <laughs> I guess then I'll be putting the prompt in, and we will go from there. Lessons learned from Don Brothers 34. There are two or three fights in every episode of a Super Sentai. Most of them are a blur. I remember Joe from Gokaiger and his friend turned enemy. Uh, it has been more than 10 years since Gokaiger ended, and I still remember that. I adore the side conflicts and personal bonds that characters share in Dawn Brothers. I think I'll remember Haruka and Sonaza talking about her slump as a manga author while they fight. I think I'll remember Taro and Sonui sharing Odin. What is this that Inoue is doing? Whatever it is, I want to do that because it feels like a key to making something that will really stick with people. Would that be called constructing a story within a story or something else? Like, what's the name of the technique? Is it just making complex layered characters? I feel like I have discovered something that is already known in the literary world, but I don't have the name for it. This is what I get for being a self-taught writer. Anyway, if you know what to call it, please chime in and let me know. Uh, And then to put it into a real sharp, pointy thing, a bullet point, I have it framed this way. Secondary connections between characters make for a richer, more engaging story. I guess that's the takeaway, but I still don't know what to call that technique or whatever. From, or this is for my lessons learned segment uh, pertaining to Kamen Rider Geats episode 8. Push your characters out of their comfort zones to get the most out of them. This all-out hero act fighting to take what he wants isn't Kayla. He wants to get by he wants to get a buy-in from others and would have just let things happen before. I mean before this he would have just let things happen and however they happen they happen and he would have accepted it. But this time he took control and did what he had to do. That was exciting to watch as an audience member and I enjoy how his fellow writers reacted to this change as well. If I had to put a fine point on this lesson learned, which I will do now, uh, it would be this. Use a character's traits and interactions as a reference point to show their growth as you push them out of their comfort zone as far as you can. I'm not sure what this prompt is going to be called. For right now, as a filler, I'm calling it What Makes a Hunter Heroic. And here we go. I've set a timer for myself for 10 minutes. I'm wasting a little bit of my time 
telling you that, but I'm having a hard time come up and, coming up with this idea. I will be pausing and unpausing as I need to, to record myself without recording all the awkward silences in between. Biting wind roused me from fleeting slumber as I waited. Endlessly to hear the cry of my falcon. Many days had passed since I was able to catch anything to feed my family. I had not been hunting on my own for long, but all the years I spent with my elders told me something was wrong. They had survived many winters of lean But I had so few. Winters on my own, and they were mild. Many misfortunes befell us this year, and we had little left remaining to eat. My focus shifted as hunger gnawed within me. I had taken no provisions on this hunt, preferring to leave as much as I could at home. The duty of a hunter is not to eat. The duty of a hunter is to catch, to kill, to provide. What better motivation or remembrance is there for me to have as I seek food than to feel the hunger of those I left behind? I will not eat until they do. There is much in me that cannot be seen. So I think it was pretty clear that I struggled mightily with that. Uh, I had a really hard time. I think I'm going to bend my rules and for the next Fabulex Machina, I'm going to return to this, but instead of uh, just extemporaneously uh, going off the top of my head, I think I'm going to take 10 minutes to dictate my uh, outline for this. I'll use the code name for it which I think is just going to be Hunter, and I will do a... I mean, I'll give you as much of the outline... I'll put all the outline out there if I decide to. Like, I have nothing against it necessarily, and since an outline is an outline, and the, you give an outline to 10 different authors, you'll get 10 completely different stories. I'm not scared that someone's going to steal my outline. And, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to put it out there, and we will see what happens. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, you can find more at mgmunios.com, as well as my entire library of analysis, art, and fiction.